There's headlines about the chaos, this and that. Yesterday, our colleagues on the other side of the aisle were tweeting their bags of popcorn that they had out. They love it. The schadenfreude is palpable. But I think my friends on the Democratic side misunderstand what's happening here. Sure, it looks messy, but democracy is messy. Democracy is messy by, by design. You just listened to Republican Congressman Mike Gallagher whine about how Democrats are laughing at the Republican Party. But it's not just Democrats who are laughing at the Republican Party. And I can assure you, this isn't about democracy coming from the party who has spit in the faces of anyone who believes in democracy over the course of the last couple of years. This debacle is hilarious because it shows that the Republican Party, they're just not serious. So I record this right as Kevin McCarthy lost his sixth vote to become the House Speaker, with 19 Republicans switching from Jim Jordan to Byron Donalds on the fourth vote after he joined them in voting for Jim Jordan on the third vote. And all of this comes after failed closed door negotiations that reportedly got heated. And this debacle has been so embarrassing that Donald Trump himself had to step in to try to save McCarthy writing on Truth Social vote for Kevin, close the deal, take the victory, and later adding, Kevin McCarthy will do a great job, and maybe even a great job, just watch. But even Donald Trump could not save Kevin McCarthy as he was met with mockery by the individuals who are refusing to vote for Kevin McCarthy. Take a look at how Lauren Boebert responded to Donald Trump. So let's work together. Let's stop with the campaign smears and tactics to get people to turn against us, even having my favorite president call us and tell us we need to knock this off. I think it actually needs to be reversed. The president needs to tell Kevin McCarthy that, sir, you do not have the votes and it's time to withdraw. And with that, I yield. Thank you. So they are not relenting. And you see an open revolt against Kevin McCarthy and an all-out mutiny. And things are deteriorating because you have Republican infighting that is escalating as a result of this debacle. Matt Gates even responded to Trump by saying, sad, this changes neither my view of McCarthy nor Trump nor my vote. Now, Gates actually took it a step further by suggesting that Kevin McCarthy was breaking the law by unlawfully occupying the Speaker's office, saying Kevin McCarthy is not the Speaker of the House. He lost three consecutive votes at the time. Today, I'm demanding answers from the architect of the Capitol. So you have Trump sycophants within the GOP openly rebelling against Donald Trump. And my favorite response to the response from the 19 or 20 now that are rebelling against Kevin McCarthy came from Tony Gonzalez, who basically said, Ooh, they're going against Daddy Trump, tisk tisk on Fox News. His response was amazing and just immature, but so good. Let's listen. I'm a little I'm a little upset. You know, here we had President Trump come out with a very powerful endorsement of Kevin McCarthy, and you have 20 members of our caucus essentially thumb their nose at the former president, saying we are above. It's not above the house. We are above the party. How dare you defy father, Daddy? Daddy, did you see? They're not listening to you, Daddy. I'm listening, Daddy. I'm a good boy, Daddy. <laughs> and, and to be honest, to be fair to Tony Gonzalez, which I don't have to be, but to be fair to him, I did actually think that Trump saying vote for McCarthy would maybe hold a little bit more sway. But you can see that Donald Trump is losing his hold on the Republican Party when even the biggest Kool-Aid drinkers are rebelling and the infighting is getting really really bad you have marjorie taylor green calling out matt gates saying he's a liar publicly let's listen when you have matt gates and the rest of the group going out there saying jim jordan's going to be speaker but yet jim jordan doesn't want to be speaker that's lying to the american people charlie and i'm not going to support any lying to the american people that was good right but it gets so much better than that listen to her call out other republicans by name well you just saw byron donald's only got 20 people byron donald's is not going to gain in support he's not even a serious candidate so people need to understand who they're following scott perry scott perry voted for gay marriage that is right correct before his that general is right. election that is voted correct. for it and he's chairman and he's leading this fight against kevin mccarthy and so i'm sick of these people that are that have done things that are hypocritical truly hypocritical and the base would hate them for it and they would be screaming at them for it but the base doesn't know because the only bad the only person they're hearing being chewed apart is kevin mccarthy 
Well, Scott Perry, who's leading the charge against other Republicans, he voted for gay marriage. <gasps> <laughs> By the way, I have a terrible Marjorie Green accent. I have a terrible Southern accent in general. But I, I just love the gotchas that they're all playing against each other. Like we see open infighting within the GOP and it is getting uglier and uglier as time goes on. And to be fair to Marjorie Taylor Greene, I think that from a pragmatic standpoint, she does have the winning argument here. She pointed out via Twitter that the Republicans who are opposing McCarthy have no plan except never Kevin. It's a total failure. And it pains me to say this, but that's actually an astute observation from Marjorie Taylor Greene because she's right. The folks who are opposing Kevin McCarthy, they're doing so all because of political theater and there's no real policy disagreement at the core of this entire kerfuffle and it really doesn't even matter anyways because they only control the house and not the senate so it's not like they can get anything that they want passed because if they pass something too absurd biden would simply veto it and kevin mccarthy has already agreed to all of the investigations and impeachments and all the bullshit that they want so what exactly is the reason for all of this. That's the question that we're all asking and nobody really has an answer. It's all political theater to build up their own name recognition. And it makes them look even more unreasonable considering that Kevin McCarthy has already made major concessions. He's agreed to allow just five rank and file members of the House to force a vote of no confidence on him, but they're demanding that just one Republican should be allowed to trigger a vote of no confidence against Kevin McCarthy, which is incredibly unrealistic. The fact that he budged on the five member thing in and of itself is pretty huge considering that you need half of members to force a vote of no confidence, but he's giving them a pretty huge gift and they're proving how unreasonable they are. And so to be in this situation where Marjorie Taylor Greene looks like the voice of reason, it's making the entire Republican Party look just terrible. But the penalty for being reasonable in the Republican Party, even if traditionally that's not how you behave, is full on excommunication because Marjorie Taylor Greene's former associate, neo-Nazi Nick Fuentes, is basically declaring war on her. So Patriot Takes on Twitter shared some of his posts on Telegram and he writes, Marjorie staked her political career on a McCarthy speakership that she is now realizing will never happen. She should go on home back to Georgia and repair her failed marriage instead of trying to play politics with the boys because she sucks at it. He went on to make fun of her for her Jewish space laser conspiracy theory and hinted that they had dirt on her, saying, Paul and Jason might be a good time to publish that recording from the AFPAC 3 green room. You know the one I'm talking about. So this is incredible because you have Republicans openly fighting against each other and both sides refuse to relent and both sides are now threatening to destroy the other. And it's just glorious. It's beautiful to watch. It makes the Republican Party look like a circus, and I think that this is a win for America. I hope that this goes on for as long as it possibly can. I hope that it's more drawn out because I love watching this shit show unfold. Now, the question is, how exactly is this going to end? Well, it could end in a number of ways. Kevin McCarthy could actually become the speaker. They could relent. Or he can choose to bow out, and that would pave the way for Steve Scalise, the second highest ranking Republican, to become the speaker. And if he fails and is also forced to drop out, then the next in line would be Elise Stefanik. Or we could see a compromise. The Hill reports that Republicans like Don Bacon hinted at the prospect of reaching out to Democrats who'd support a consensus candidate, and Ro Khanna has reportedly been open to that idea. Or Kevin McCarthy could still become speaker at the end of the day if enough Democrats choose to bail him out and vote present, which would would lower the vote threshold uh, needed to become speaker. So we don't know what's going to happen, how this will transpire, and I hope that it's as drawn out and uh, grueling as it possibly can be. And I hope the Democrats don't choose to bail out Republicans and Kevin McCarthy because this is the bed that they've made for themselves. And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter because nothing is going to get accomplished in this Congress anyway, right? We're going to see anything that the House passes be rejected by the Senate or ultimately vetoed by Joe Biden. And all they're going to do once they're seated and sworn in is do a bunch of dumb investigations that are completely pointless. They're going to try to impeach Biden. They're not going to accomplish anything. So I think the best scenario here is to just let them sink, watch them attack each other. Hopefully this fuels even more infighting for the future and just grab your popcorn and enjoy it because these Republicans are genuinely terrible people and the fact that they're all at each other's throats is a victory for the country and the world, literally. 
I'm gonna come. Do not come. 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 Welcome to the Come Zone. Come. 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 Come.